Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist chemistry video looking at the industrial process fractional distillation. Now fractional distillation is a way of making crude oil more useful to us. So first I'm going to focus on exactly what crude oil actually is. So here's a barrel of crude oil pouring out its contents onto the floor. And if I were to zoom into that liquid um, and look at it at a molecular level, I'd see something a bit like this, revealing to me that crude oil is a random mixture of hydrocarbon molecules. Now I want to expand upon the term hydrocarbon quickly. So if you check out the info box which suddenly appeared, it gives a really good definition for exactly what hydrocarbons actually are. Hydrocarbons effectively are just molecules comprised of, made up of, carbon and hydrogen atoms only. And they are really useful molecules and there are a plethora of different types of hydrocarbons out there. Most notably, the two families of molecules we'll be investigating in other videos, the alkanes and the alkenes. I'm sure you're aware that crude oil is a massively important natural resource and that many countries' economies are heavily reliant upon it. Now, the strange thing is, in its raw form, since its composition isn't particularly predictable, um, it's not very useful. It doesn't burn particularly well. It can't be used as a fuel in its raw state. It must be refined. And that refining process is what we're going to look at now. And part of that process is called fractional distillation. Now, before I get into this diagram here, I just want to say again, if you're finding this content or other content on the channel useful, please do give the video a like. Maybe think about subscribing to the channel and maybe even ringing the bell to keep notified of our ongoing content. So this is our diagram of a fractional distillation column. This would be a huge tower the size of a multi-story building and part of a much wider industrial complex where we're doing our refining process. I'm going to try and break down this process into a number of key steps and stages explain the chemistry behind the process itself and also what key products are produced by this process. So picture the scene, a massive oil tanker has just docked outside of this refinery and is now pumping its crude oil into the refinery to be processed and it's going towards this first stage. The first stage is that crude oil, which is currently a liquid, will be pumped into a furnace where it would be heated until all of the crude oil is vaporized into a gas. All the components of the crude oil, all the various hydrocarbons of different chain lengths, vaporize into gases. Now, you can't directly heat the crude oil with a flame because it would burn the crude oil. So we can see this pipework is running through the furnace, keeping the crude oil separate from the actual flames themselves, but allowing the high temperature to vaporize the liquid crude oil into a gas and therefore all of the hydrocarbon components of the crude oil are also in the gaseous state. Next, the gaseous crude oil is pumped into the bottom of the massive fractionating column. Now you may have noticed there's a color difference up the column as we move from the bottom to top, going from red to orange to yellow to blue. That is emphasizing that there is a temperature gradient within this column. The bottom of the column is maintained at the highest temperature, whilst the top of the column is maintained at the lowest temperature, and there are a range of temperatures slowly decreasing from high to low as we rise up the column. That's really important for the separation process, which I'll expand upon now. At the bottom of the column where the highest temperatures are being maintained, the longest chain hydrocarbon molecules, which themselves have the highest boiling points, will be able to condense at those high temperatures and be collected separate from all the other shorter hydrocarbon molecules, which will not be able to condense at those temperatures because they have lower boiling points than those longest chains and will rise as gases up the column to the cooler areas. The reason why the long chain hydrocarbons are able to effectively condense and become liquids at those high temperatures is because they have the highest boiling points. The reason for their high boiling points is because the longer the chain, the greater the proportion of weak intermolecular forces that can be formed along that chain length. And so the longest molecules will form the greatest number of weak intermolecular forces along their length and therefore will form 
stronger interactions with other long chain hydrocarbons, whilst short chain hydrocarbons will not be able to build up as many weak intermolecular forces along the surface area of their shorter chain lengths. Each division of temperature will allow similarly sized molecules to condense. There'll be a range of molecules, but they won't be exactly the same size, but they will be similar lengths. And we call that particular collection a fraction because it is a fraction of the overall crude oil population of molecules and we get a number of divisions or a number of fractions. Fractions collected at the bottom of the column at higher temperature will have similar physical characteristics including high viscosity i.e. they will be slow flowing thick liquids, high boiling points as already discussed, low flammability they will not ignite easily and will not burn very effectively and they'll be darker in colour, ranging from black to brown in shade. Now, the shorter chain hydrocarbon molecules will have the lowest boiling points. They will rise up the column to the lower and lower temperatures and only condense at the lowest temperatures based around their low boiling points. As discussed earlier, the reason behind their low boiling points is that they are smaller molecules and therefore will form far fewer weak intermolecular forces between molecules along their chain lengths, which are much shorter, meaning they have weaker attractions and weaker interactions with each other and are boiled and separated from each other with heat energy much more easily. Now, the design of the fractionating column is clever in the fact that it uses bubble caps at each division of the opening of each division. Those bubble caps have two functions. One, they will aid in the condensing of liquids at that particular temperature and allow them to flow out and be collected. But secondly, they help to prevent any flow back of liquids down into the previous uh, fraction, helping to increase the efficiency of removal of fractions at the correct level. Fractions of hydrocarbons collected at the top of the column will have very different physical attributes and characteristics compared to those collected at the bottom due to them being much smaller molecules. We'd expect them to be low viscosity, i.e. they would flow very easily and not be thick liquids. We've already discussed they're going to have low boiling points, but they'd have high flammability. They ignite with great ease and burn very effectively. And finally, they would be lighter in colour. We'd be expecting them to be either colourless or light yellow in appearance. Now I want to finish by looking at the various uses of the fractions produced by the fracture installation process. They are incredibly useful and are found in many aspects of our modern transportation systems and chemical manufacturing processes. Starting at the bottom of the column, what is collected is a thick tar-like substance known as bitumen or residue and it's one of the main components used in the tarmacking of roads for mass transportation. Next we have lubricating oil which is a thick, viscous oil used to lubricate and allow the easy frictionless motion of machinery. This is followed by fuel oil, a high energy fuel source used for the transportation of goods across oceans and seas. We're talking about large transport shipping. This is the fuel for those sorts of vehicles. Next we have diesel, again an energy rich fuel used for transportation of goods, we're talking about uh, the fuels for trucks, maybe the fuels for trains, maybe the fuels for buses, we're still talking large mass transportation vehicles. Moving up further still, we come into kerosene, which is aviation fuel, the fuel we use in our jetliners for transportation and travel purposes. Higher still, we're getting towards the smaller molecules, lighter color fractions, naphtha is a feedstock component of many other chemicals. So it's often used in chemical reactions and chemical processes to generate other useful chemical substances for the commercial market. Nearing the top of the column, we come across a very familiar fraction, petrol, used to fuel cars and used to drive the internal combustion engines, which essentially drive the modern world itself, currently, before we move more to hydrogen fuel cells and electric battery powered cars. And finally, the very top of the column, you notice that actually these appear to be still in the gaseous state. So these are not condensing at all within the column itself. They are being tapped off as a gas and collected separately. And these are the refinery gases or liquid petroleum gases, i.e. the fuels we use in uh, gas canisters for camping, heating and cooking purposes.
So there you have it guys, that is a full summary of the fractional distillation process, including the key stages, the reasons behind the different boiling points of the different fractions themselves, and also a quick summary of the key uses of the various fractions being separated. Now, as a chemistry teacher and also as a chemist, it is my sincere hope that this video eventually becomes more of a historical artifact rather than a key syllabus and curriculum point as we move to phase out fossil fuels and rein in our carbon-based economy. I'm hoping this becomes more of a curiosity than a immediate relevance. But right now, this industry and these components are still hugely important to our modern economies. And I hope that helps to understand the process a little better. Guys, as always, thank you for listening. Um, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel and do check out our other content which will appear here. And as always, great talking to you and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.